Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here. Welcome back to part 10 of the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time full playthrough walkthrough. In this section of the walkthrough, we're gonna go through the Fire Temple. We have a very short, um, not even a side quest, just an item to get before we can enter Death Mountain. Um, so let's do that now. We're gonna start at the Temple of Time and then we're gonna head over to Kakariko Village. So keep an eye on that red glow around Death Mountain, that crazy cloud. By the time we're done, that may look a little bit different. Yes, yeah, so we're going to avoid the re-deads here. Alright, I'm not even going to bother calling Epona just because Kakariko Village is right over here. What's funny is that the overworld Death Mountain, the cloud never turns red. It's the same throughout the entire game. I don't know if that was an oversight or if they just didn't have like the memory budget to really do anything about it, but I always found that funny. All right, back in Kakariko Village. Uh, by the time that we're done with this dungeon, we will have over 20 gold skulltillas, so we will be able to get that Stone of Agony that I have been talking about throughout the the uh, last couple episodes here. But the cloud over Death Mountain does appear hello, in Kakariko Village. So it's really just Hyrule feel that it doesn't change. And of course, Navi says the cloud over Death Mountain, something strange about it, obviously. So that's kind of your cue to get over here. I think the game also just anticipates you to want to um, either just run around and explore and find things on your own, which, you know, a lot of games did back in the 90s. Um, or uh, they expected you to revisit the areas that you have already gone to. I think that's a bit likelier of a story. All right, so we're going to go to Goron City. See what's going on there. And if you notice, we're basically headed in the general direction of Death Mountain itself. So maybe there's a way to get there easier. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to roll off. Alright, so entering Goron Village, the only thing you can hear in the city is a Goron rolling around. Now, we've dealt with this before, as an adult, or as a child, we dealt with a Goron that was rolling around, and so the answer, oh, wow, okay, the answer is to use a bomb, and then you'll sort of break its rolling cycle. Oh, really? That was brutal. It's tough to get a line on this thing. I'm sure a speedrunner would tell you that it's easy and that, you know, you can do one thing and it'll work every single time, but I don't know. For us mere mortals, you really got to time it. So, once you stop the Goron, they say, how could you do this to me? You, you're Ganondorf servant. Hear my name and tremble. I am Link, hero of the Gorons. It's a weird name, right? Same name as yours. What? Your name is also Link? Then you must be the legendary Dodongo Buster and hero, Link. My dad is Darunia. Do you remember him? Dad named me Link after you because you're so brave. It's a cool name. I really like it. Link, you're a hero to us Gorons. I'm so glad to meet you. Please give me your autograph. Sign it to my friend, Link of the Gorons. Oh, I guess it's not a good time to ask you for this. Please help everyone. My dad, Darunia, went to the Fire Temple. A dragon is inside. If we don't hurry up, even my dad will be eaten by the dragon. And he starts crying. And then Navi says, you better try to calm him down if you can. Maybe he'll calm down if you talk to him. So, you gotta ask him both questions. Uh, so let's ask about the dragon. It says, a long time ago, there was an evil dragon named Volvagia living in this mountain. That dragon was very scary. He ate Gorons. Using a huge hammer, the hero of the Gorons... Boom! Destroyed it just like that. This is a myth from long ago, but it's true. 
I know because my dad is a descendant of the hero. He starts crying again. Asked about the Gorons. Everybody was taken to the fire temple. While my dad was out, Ganondorf's followers came and took them all away. All of them will be eaten by Volvagia. Dad said that Ganondorf has revived Volvagia. As a warning to those who might oppose him, Ganondorf is going to feed them all to Volvagia. Dad went to the fire temple all by himself to try to save everyone. Please help, Link. I'll give you this heat-resistant tunic. You got a Goron tunic. This heat-resistant tunic is adult size, so it won't fit a kid. Going to a hot place? No worry. Dad told me not to let anybody follow him to the temple, but only you, Link, can save everyone. I'm sure that the shop owner, who is hiding somewhere right now, will also help you. Now, I'll tell you about the secret passage to the fire temple. Try to move the statue inside Dad's room. So, a couple things. First, let's equip the fire tunic, or the Goron tunic. Turns this red, and it makes us resistant to heat. Now, uh, Link says to uh, speak with the shopkeeper. Maybe he'll help us. It, he's just letting you know the shop is reopened. The shopkeeper has nothing unique to offer. All right, so let's go to Darunia's room. And then Link said to try to move the statue in here. So that's this thing right here. So the context button says grab. So grab and then pull it back. Here we are. Okie doke. So this is Death Mountain. Death Mountain Crater. So you can crack these pots open. They don't really contain anything crazy, but arrows are always helpful, bombs are always helpful. All right, so we have the hook shot, so we can actually cross this gap here. So you wanna latch onto this post, you'll fall, and then walk forward. Oh, but look who it is. It's Sheik, our good friend. It is something that grows over time, a true friendship, a feeling in the heart that becomes even stronger over time. The passion of friendship will soon blossom into a righteous power, and through it, you will know which way to go. This song is dedicated to the power of the heart. Listen to the bolero of fire. Okay, you've learned the Bolero of Fire. Sheik says, Link, I'll see you again. And as Link attempts to approach Sheik to get them to stay, they back away, raise a wall of fire, and vanish. All right, so that's it for the side questing. Now we can just get right into the Fire Temple. So if you played the Bolero of Fire, you will land right on this pedestal here. And the entrance to the fire temple is over here. Now, this is a spot that you can reach as a child, but you can't get into the fire temple as a child. It's blocked by a bunch of boulders. All right, so the quick way down is to just do that. And enter the fire temple. All right, so first off, what we need to do is we need to equip some bottles. Get at least two. And then we're gonna come up here. We're gonna go through this door here. <clears throat> oh man, look who it is! It's Darunia. Who's there? Is that you, Link? Oh, it really is Link. You've grown so big since I last saw you. I want to have a man-to-man -man talk with you, but now is not the time. Ganondorf is causing trouble on Death Mountain again. He has revived the evil ancient dragon, Volvagia. On top of that, He's going to feed my people to that evil dragon as a warning to other races that might resist him. I was checking to make sure my mic was recording. <laughs> if that fire-breathing dragon escapes from the mountain, 
all of Hyrule would become a burning wasteland. I will go on ahead to try to seal up the evil dragon. I'm concerned, though, because I don't have the legendary hammer, but I have no choice. Link, I'm asking you to do this as my sworn brother. While I'm trying to deal with the dragon, please save my people. The prisoner's cells are in the opposite direction. I'm counting on you, Link. So, unfortunately, there's a huge chasm that we can't cross. So, we're going to have to find another way to reach him. However, if we come over here, we can... Hello. Thank you. Zip over here. And there's a couple of pots up here. And there's two fairies inside, so that's why I want to come here. Great. Okay. Alright, so now let's go to the other side. Oh boy. Step on this switch here and open the first cell and rescue the first of nine Gorons. Are you releasing me? Am I free to go? I'll tell you a secret for saving me. In order to get into the room where Darunia went, you have to do something about the pillars stuck in the ceiling. Find a path that leads to a room above the ceiling right away. Don't worry, we will. And we can open up this chest for our first small key. So the pillar they're talking about is this thing sticking out of the ceiling here. This is the pillar. So we're going to find a way to do something about that uh, later on. All right, so now that we have a small key, we can now open the door that's on the other side of this room here, back where we started. The Fire Temple in Master Quest is really cool. I'm just remembering certain puzzles here. It's so good. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the left. Now, there's a lot of fire keys in this room, but if you just keep moving, chances are they won't bother you. All right, come over here, come over here, come over here. Great job. All right, so we're not going to do anything about that time block just yet. Instead, we're going to come in here, and we're going to rescue another Goron. Rescuing a Goron basically always guarantees you a small key, except for the final one, which gives you the boss key. So this hint is, a wall that you can destroy with the Goron's special crop will sound different than a regular wall if you hit it with your sword. The Goron's special crop is, of course, bombs. Get, a, get the next key. All right. So now let's go ahead and play the Song of Time and drop that block. Whoops. So the block of time is dropped, and we can hop up here, come in here, and then if you played A Link to the Past, this room's going to feel a little familiar. The Attack of the Killer Tiles. Luckily, there's way less in this game than there are in Link to the Past, and they're all specially marked, so you know which ones they are. All right. Now, the other thing in this room is this enemy here. This is a like-like. So... An enemy that eats shields and certain clothes. Beat it quickly to get your gear back. So, they're actually relatively easy to defeat. You can just... Sh oh my god. What? You can just shoot them twice. It's weird when they're vulnerable when they're not. Sometimes they spit out a decent amount of rupees, though. But the main purpose of coming into this room is the gold scatola. Alright, so that's the first one. And if my notes are correct, there are five in here. Uh, uh, I, th I think there's five. 
All right, so now let's go to the other side of the room. Let's wait for this, this block. And if you'd like, you can stand on this block here and it'll shoot up into the ceiling. And then there is some pots here with uh, some supplies. And I'm just gonna drop back down. This floor will hurt you even with the flame tunic or the Goron tunic rather. But you can cross it if you're willing to just like sacrifice a couple hearts. Okay. All right. So this wall looks real interesting, right? If you hit it, it makes a special sound. So like the Goron said, it can be destroyed using the Goron special crop. There we go. And another Goron. And there's four gold scotolas in here. Anyway. No, there's five. There's definitely five. Switches in this temple. Maybe there's four. We'll get them all. Don't worry. I just can't remember if I noted the last one. All right. All right. Another small key. Cool. So now we're more or less done with this... Uh, with the sides of this big room. So we are going to head towards the locked door and start using our keys. Nah, didn't think that was gonna work. Oh boy, lots happening here. Okie doke. Drop a heart, no luck. All right, in we go further into the temple. So this room is pretty interesting. You see this jet that is spewing lava out of this hole? Well, we can actually use that to our advantage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna climb up here you want to be careful, though, because there are keys on these rafters. You can hear them gently flapping their wings. So once you're up here, I recommend standing far away. Ooh, double tap. That was fun. Okay, there's a couple on the other side along with some recovery hearts if you need. What we're going to do is we are going to gently drop off here. We're going to push this block. It's going to fall on top of the jet. And then we're going to be able to ride this block into the ceiling. So you want to fall down onto it, and then just wait a second. There you go. Oops. Oh, God, come on. That's weird. Use our key, open the door, and then in we go. So this room is a little interesting. It introduces us to these enemies here. These are torch slugs. These guys might seem like slow and boring, and sometimes they literally just like stick up out of fear, but other times they will jump you. So you'll notice over here there's a crystal switch. Hitting that crystal switch drops the fire ring that is around this chain, uh, chain link fence that we can climb, but it has a short timer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up Although we are not actually going to follow the rules here. There's a much easier way to do this that does not involve scrambling around using a push block. So, let's set the block up. Great. Pull it back over here. And we're going to jump over here. And we're going to climb. And what you can do is you can just line up a bomb. So this will take a couple of attempts, but believe me when I tell you, this is just way easier to do. Take out a bomb, chuck it. That's nah, too short. That should be okay. No, really? I think that's good. Wow, really? 
There you go. It's just way easier that way. It The platforming in Ocarina of Time can be a little tricky because it's so stiff. So doing it that way, it's just easier. Otherwise, you would stand on the push block, shoot an arrow at the switch, and then try to do the platforming really fast, but it's just easier this way. All right, so this room is interesting. Oh, boy. So there's a lot of boulders rolling around. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to get to one end of the room. Okay. So this switch right here, this is going to open up this cell. Speak with the Goron. His hint is... In this temple, there are doors that fall down when you try to open them. When one of these doors starts to fall, move. If you use a sample of the Goron special crop, you can break it. So there are false doors in this dungeon that are essentially enemies. But the hint of breaking them is very important, because we will have to do that. Okay, so we open that. Let's come over here. Oh, boy. Oh, we're on the other side here. Yeah, okay. Let's come over here. All right, now we're going to go to the other side of this room. Wow. We're go to the other side of the room. Just go all the way over. All right, and once you're in this corner, there's something special to do. So as you approach this wall, you can hear a gold scotola. And then if you hit the wall, you'll notice your sword makes a different sound, so you want to bomb this wall. Okay, so that's called Scatola number two. Also over, oh my god, these boulders. So also over here is this room. Let's go in here. It's another Goron cell. Let's speak with him. He says, let me tell you a secret as a reward for releasing me. When you are on fire, you can put it out by swinging your sword or by rolling forward. Did you know that? No, I didn't. All right. All right, another small key. All right, so with two small keys in tow, we can now exit this room. Oh my goodness. And luckily, there's a locked door over here. This is where you want to go. Great. All right, so in this room, we have a narrow passage. Got a couple of recovery hearts on this side that we'll grab. But you'll notice that there is a door with bars over it. And then if you look up, you'll see an eyeball switch. Great job. All right, if we come in here, we'll get the map in this giant chest. All right, cool. All right, so back out. Now we're gonna exit the room. Oh God, the, uh, whoa, the other way. God, that would've sucked. If you fall down in some of these rooms, you literally go back to the start of the dungeon. All right, so this room is kind of interesting. This is the other side of the cage we were just in. So when we touch the grate on the floor that's floating above the lava, a wall of flame is going to chase us. We need to get to the other side of the room before the wall of flame catches up to us. If it touches us, we just get like zoned out back to the start. As you cross the pits, though, you got to be careful of those guys. All right. Great job. All right. Come up here. Open the dough. And now what we're going to do is we're going to jump over here, and we're going to take care of this slug. All right. So you'll notice that there's a platform up there. And Navi is glowing green. So that is our cue to come over here. And then play the Scarecrow song once Navi flies off. And 
And there is Pierre. All right, go ahead and take out your hook shot, and then we're going to attach to Pierre. And this is going to lead us to two gold skulltulas alongside a huge rupee. So if your wallet's empty, get ready. Zip over here is a nice little elevator that takes you up. hear this Skulltola right off the jump. Okay. Climb up here. Come over here. And then the other gold Skulltola is precariously perched along this wall here. All right, so there is a puzzle in this room that rewards you with a huge rupee, like I said. So it involves you hitting this floor switch, and then when you do that, the ring of fire around a chest uh, around this ramp will drop, and then that chest contains a, a huge rupee worth 200 rupees. It's a gold one. Now, even though my wallet is full, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So once you reach here, you wanna take out your hook shot, hook onto this, jump over, and then just start heading to the left. There you go. Cool. Great job. All right, so once you're ready, just drop back down, and then we're just going to go back the way we came. Okay, the elevator isn't here, but you can just drop, and it will take you back up. I recommend waiting for it to take you back up and then bring you back down. And the reason for that is because if you don't, and you try to scramble and jump off, you may not make the platform, and then you gotta go all the way back around. All right, so just fall off here. Great job. All right, now we're gonna come back over here, kill this slug again. And then, if you walk on this, Navi will start yelling at you. And she's basically just going to tell you, like, doesn't that look curious? Yes, it does. It's a crack. Bomb the crack. All right. So we're actually going to come back to that in, in a second. Uh, for now, though, we're going to just do the rest of this room. This way we don't have to do too much backtracking. So you're going to come over here over here. Oops, forgot to, forgot to step here. All right, we're gonna jump over here. We're gonna jump over here. Make sure you deal with the slug. All right, and then this switch here will open up the cell behind us. Great, and the game kindly points us in the direction we need to go. All right, don't forget about this slug. All right, just jump over and rescue another Goron. So he says, if you find a place that you can see on the map but can't reach, try playing your ocarina. That's the hint for Pierre. All right, another small key. All right, so now we're gonna head over to that uh, crack that we bombed in the floor. corner. It's another Goron. All right, go ahead and get your small key. Great job. Talk to the Goron. He says, here's a tip for rescuing me. Somewhere in this temple, you're sure to meet up with some creatures that dance as they attack. Arrows won't hurt them. 
Looks like you might need some of the Goron special crop. That's all I have to tell you. So, it's not an entirely accurate hint. While those particular enemies dance, it, you can't use an arrow on them, but otherwise you can. So, in case you're wondering where this is, this is the room with the crystal switch sort of speedrun puzzle, or timer puzzle. So now we can just go through here. Oh, you can't latch onto this. Okay. All right, so now that we have a couple small keys in tow, we're gonna go back to the, oh boy. We're gonna go, oh, seriously? We're gonna go back to the room with the wall of fire. It's right through here. All right, so on the far side of this room, basically just across from where we are, you'll see a locked door over there. So as soon as we touch this grate, the wall of fire is gonna start from this end. So you still have to outrun it, but it's easy enough. It doesn't look like that should work, but they give it to you. All right. In Master Quest, I believe in this hallway, a like like drops down. So if you're playing Master Quest, there you go. Okay, so this room is peculiar. You got this big thing in the middle, and then Navi starts glowing green. So if you target it and press C up, she says you can see down from here. Isn't that the room where we saw Darunia? So this is the, the base of the pillar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna get the compass. Follow this boulder, snake around, come in here. Alrighty. Finally, you get the compass basically at the end of the game, at the end of the temple. We're gonna be done real soon. All right, there's the compass. Yeah, the, the temple sort of wraps up quickly. All right, so wait for the boulder to move, and then we're gonna snake back to where we were. Okay, now we're gonna go to this side. Watch out for the spinning flame pillar. You don't wanna touch that. Oh my God. Very good. All right, come through here. And we're gonna revisit this room because there is a Goron in here, but we can't rescue him just yet. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna just go through here. And now we're basically just on the other side. So that's the room where we got the compass, but this whole wall was, was flame, so we couldn't come over here otherwise. Ow. All right, so what we gotta do now Oh, there's a switch over here. Right, right, right. Okay. So let's hug this wall, and there's a switch on the floor. So this switch is going to lower this wall of fire. And then what we need to do is navigate through here. All right. This door probably looks weird, right? It's a door that is just in front of a wall because it's not a real door. This is one of those doors the Goron was telling you about. So if you blow it up, it also blows up the wall behind it revealing a door. Now, this is going to be a mini boss, just letting you know, that's why there's some some supplies out here. And this is the dancing enemy that the Goron was telling us about. So we target it, talk to Navi, it's called the Flare Dancer, right? It's in the name. Extinguish its flaming clothes first. So, we're gonna take out a bomb, just chuck it at it while you're targeting, and then the little bomb inside Oh, God. The little bomb inside is what you can actually attack. And then you should repeat the process. Now, as the boss changes colors, flames will start being spewed out of the boss. Oh, my God, that was a guess. Okay. So it goes orange, purple, or blue, then green. So green is when it's basically done, but if you wait too long, flames will uh, spew out of it, and they last quite a while. So what you can do is you can just target it, and then like kite it around 
the room, and then just, you know, keep repeating. All right. So we hop up here, and it's an elevator. I believe in Master Quest there's a key underneath this elevator that you gotta pick up. Okay. Let's go through the door. And now it's another timer puzzle. This one, I believe the intended solution is for you to do this. But it's the same idea as before, but way easier. Just go to the edge, plant a bomb, drop it off the edge, and then just wait. Yeah, that's definitely the intended path. Okie doke. All right. This room contains the Megaton Hammer. Now, similar to the Gold Rupee Puzzle Room, or Timer Challenge, there's... You gotta hit the switch and then reach the chest before the flame wall comes back up. You can attempt to... Actually, I don't think you can, really. Yeah, that's... There's no way you'd be able to do that. I guess maybe you could. You could take the long way. I've never actually done it. I think maybe you're allowed to do it, but we're going to go this way instead. We're just going to follow the inner ring. It is a bit tougher, but you save so much time. So just do your best to stay on. Once you get past that narrow bit, you're basically home free. All right. There you go. Found the Megaton Hammer. Use C to smash and break junk. It's so heavy, you need two hands to swing it. Okay, so now we have the Megaton Hammer. What can we do with it? Well, let's go back to where we came. And then you'll notice this thing moves when you stand on it. And it's got a face on it. So, let's take out our newfound item. And use it. There you go. So you can also use it to smash these bricks off of doors. And if you remember, there's one just like it at the beginning of the temple. All right, I do recommend uh, killing the fire keys in here because you need to bring down a box. All right, cool. So smash this and then it's gonna drop the floor. Very good. Now what you want to do is you want to pick up one of these boxes and then just carry it down with you. It is possible to do without killing those two fire keys, but it's just it's a little hectic to do so. Alright. Cool, same deal. And then here we are in the central room again. However, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here. And these rusted switches you need to smash with the hammer. Oh, this switch looks rusted. No joke. Okay. Come in here. There's a time block. And if you recognize this room, we are above a prison cell. Let's go ahead and take out your ocarina. The block moves. And then we can use it to actually get across. All right, take out your hammer, smash the rush to the switch, and we free a Goron. Oops. A door is hidden inside the statue at the entrance to this temple, but the Goron special crop won't work on it. Don't you have anything stronger? Yes, we do. And another small key. All right. So let's go out this door. And then... Is it this door? Nope, it's the other door. Sorry about that. Easy to get turned around. Actually, let's just go the exact way we came. A little bit easier. Okay, then we're going to hop across and use the hammer to drop this. Here 
here we are back at the start of the temple. Now we have access to the boss door, but we don't have the boss key yet. However, there's still one last area that we haven't explored, and it's at the entrance of the temple. So now that we have the Megaton Hammer, we can break these bricks. All right. Come in here, and we gotta kill all the enemies. God. It's funny that the things drop magic, but you really don't have much that uses magic in this game. Or at least up until this point. All right. We'll go through here. Now we're in a room with another like like, floating tiles, and a gold skulltola. Same deal as before, just block the tiles. And then kill the like like from a distance. Here's Skotola number five. Just bring up the map screen to confirm. That's all five. Groovy. Okay, another mini boss fight. Same exact deal as before. No, what are you doing? What was that? Where the hell is it? See what I mean? It can uh, spawn fireballs, and these take a while to go away. Yep, that's why it's annoying. It really messes up your whole groove. There you go. All right. So that's that. Door opens. Chest shows up. This is just bombs. It's, you know, nothing crazy. All right. Next room. Hey, it's another Goron. But it has a rusted switch, so take out your hammer. Bonk it open, and you can see here is the chest to the boss key. All right. Talk to the Goron. Don't skip his text. For some reason, it's the only one that, like, mega skips. Oh, I see. Big Brother Darunia asked you to rescue me. I owe you big time. Please help Big Brother. So no more hints. We're basically done. All right, just follow him out. And then we are literally back at the entrance. So had you gone through this door the first time, you would have just hit a dead end. I love it when temples, like, show you the end of the dungeon. Um at the start. I think it's really cool. All right. So now that the pillars dropped, we can jump over here, jump over here, and get ready to fight the boss. I will warn you, this boss can meet out a lot of damage pretty quickly. When it pops out of the hole and you're going to play whack-a-mole with it, with the hammer, try to step back a bit because its little arms can deal damage to you. That's really what you got to watch out for. And then there's a phase where it flies around and... Uh, you got to, um, you can shoot it with a bow if you're lucky. You got to really time it very well. All right. 
Subterranean Lava Dragon, Volvagia. Clearly it's a fire dragon. So it flies around the room and then it jumps into one of the holes in the ground. And then you just want to look out for the fire that spouts out of it. It will alternate between flying around and just popping out. So once it pops out, just take out your hammer and then bonk it again. All right, now we just look for where it's coming out next. You can target it and then knock an arrow. And then once it starts going straight, you can shoot arrows at it. You can hit it with your sword as it's going back in. It's just a little tough to do. All right, where's it coming out next? I'm gonna do a jump slash on it. All right, cool. I'm not sure which is stronger. All right, so here it comes. If you lose the targeting on it, that is because, yeah, so when it does that, you want, oh, yikes, boulders will fall from the ground. It's a little tough to see the shadows, but it's the same deal as when you were uh, going around Death Mountain as Child Link. It's the same exact idea. And then the boulders will just follow Volvagia into the hole that it goes into. So again, once it goes straight, you're good to shoot. All right, there's Volvagia. head transforms into the heart container. All right, and teleport out. And we will meet the Sage of the Fire Temple. Evil of the Mountain has been expunged, and now that crazy fire ring is no longer there. Who could it be? Of course. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate what you did. I'm going to read this the whole way. really appreciate what you did. Thank you on behalf of the entire Goron race. You turned out to be a real man, just as I thought you would, brother. By the way, I, the wild Darunia, turned out to be the great sage of fire. Isn't that funny, brother? Well, this was this must be what they call destiny. Nothing has made me happier than helping you seal the evil here. Hey, brother, take this. This is a medallion that contains the power of the fire spirits and my friendship. So again, I think this lends credence to the rumor that it wasn't even a rumor, but the medallions in some iteration of this game were usable items, and I think this medallion was supposed to have the same power as Din's fire. Now, that's how I feel about it. Don't forget, now you and I are true brothers. All right, even the skybox in Death Mountain Crater has changed. So there's still one thing for us to do here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna head back the way we came. So you wanna go back onto this bridge and take out your hook shot. Okay. 
Okay, and hook onto this post. All right, and now because we have the hammer, we can break red boulders. Silver ones don't come till later, but we can break these red ones. So take it out, bonk them, and you gain access to this cave. In this cave is a great fairy fountain. So take out your ocarina and play Zelda's lullaby. Welcome, Link. I am the great fairy of wisdom. I'm going to enhance your magic power. Receive it now. <laughs> so if you played A Link to the Past, uh, you may have stumbled across a way to reduce the cost of um, magic using items by half, which effectively gave you a double magic meter. This game literally gives you a double magic meter. It just doubles it. So it says your magic power has been enhanced. Now you have twice as much magic power. When battle has made you weary, please come back to see me. There you go. All right. So. That is kind of that. At least for now. Let's just get out of here and we'll chat for a sec. Alright. So, we're going to end it here. Oh. I wasn't sure if they actually came back. Thank you, Link. Okay, just thank you. Alright, so, that's going to do it for now. In the next section of the walkthrough, we're going to go through the Ice Cavern. The Ice Cavern is not a temple. Temple is not in the name, obviously. But you have to do the Ice Cavern in order to gain access to the Water Temple. I'm going to warn you. This is the most frustrating part of the game. These next two dungeons. The Ice Cavern and then the Water Temple. They get remarkably easier in the 3D version or the 3DS version of this game. Because the item that you get from the Ice Cavern can be assigned to a button. In the Nintendo 64 and GameCube versions of the game, you have to constantly change your equipment, which means pausing the game, going to the menu, selecting it, pausing the game, going to the menu, unselecting it. Like, you got to do it over and over and over and over again. So it's going to be a, a long couple walkthroughs purely because the game makes you change equipment so much. But we'll get through it. I'll show you the, I'll show you the way. Not a big deal. Uh, even though the Ice Cavern is not a temple, it still does have gold skulltolas. Oh, I just realized. We need to turn in... Our gold skull is for the Stone of Agony. How silly of me. Anyway, the Ice Cavern still has gold skull tillas For you to collect. I hear one now, but we're not going to get it. Uh, the Ice Cavern is another reason why I wanted to get the fourth bottle. The Ice Cavern has... Uh, several puzzles that require you to bottle a blue flame um, and you need to use it to melt red ice so in doing that um, in doing that we um, you know we'll obviously be taking bottle space away from fairies so having a fourth bottle allows you a little bit of wiggle room I so rarely ever walk down Death Mountain Trail. That's funny. All right. To the House of Skulltulla. Where's the second one? Over here. The curse has been broken. Thank you. Here's a reward for you. It is still the Nintendo 64 Rumble Pack. That's so funny. You obtain the Stone of Agony. It causes your Rumble feature to react to nearby secrets. Now, 
the Wavebird controller does not have a rumble in it. So does it still go off at all? No, it doesn't. There's a secret right here. Ah, all right, so if you're playing on the on a regular GameCube controller or the N64 controller with the rumble pack built in, it would vibrate right here to let you know there's a secret nearby. In the 3DS version, it was changed to the Shard of Agony um, because the 3DS obviously doesn't have a rumble feature. Um, and so it would just glow and make a sound. I'm not 100% sure what the Switch version does. I guess the Switch controllers have rumble, so it probably rumbles. Um, but yeah, okay, that's it. Uh, next time, Ice Cavern, and then the walkthrough after that will be the Water Temple. Uh, one final thing that I want to say is that the Fire Temple uh, has been changed since release. Not any of the puzzles or room layout or anything like that, but the music has been changed. The original version of the Fire Temple's music um, was said to have had some sort of uh, Muslim chanting or Arabic chanting, um, and people got upset about it, and they changed it. So if you're curious, go look that up on YouTube, just like a version 1.0 Fire Temple OST. Um, the other thing that got changed in Ocarina of Time uh, across N64 versions and has consistently stayed this way now is the symbol on the blocks. It's no longer like two eyes and two, two circles and two triangles. Um, it used to be a crescent moon with a star, and that got changed too. It sort of looked like the Turkish flag maybe. I don't know. This is kind of dumb, but, um, you know, whatever. But, yeah, look that stuff up if you're curious. But next time, Ice Cavern. All right. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when you guys go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video, or you can leave a super thanks by clicking the heart icon below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord. The links for those are in the description below. As always, I'll speak Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.